Hey guys, my name is Phil, welcome to another retro video review. Previously on Phil's computer lab, we had a look at the NVIDIA TNT2, the 3DFX Voodoo 3, Matrox G400 Max, the ATI Rage 128 Pro, the S3 Savage 4 and of course the 3DFX Voodoo. Today we're looking at a very important graphics card, it is NVIDIA's GeForce 256. And this card is special because it is the world's first GPU as well as NVIDIA's first GeForce. This video is packed with information about this graphics card. There are benchmark results and analysis. We will look at drivers, pricing, availability and check out power draw. We will also showcase popular games to see what the GeForce 256 can do. And at the end of the video is a summary and recommendation. Is the GeForce 256 worth it or should you look elsewhere? Wasn't Jake supposed to take care of this? Max Payne. Now this is a 2001 TNL supporting game. We're running at 1024 by 768 resolution with medium details. The FPS do vary greatly. Often we are around 80 to 100 FPS which is fantastic but sometimes we do get drops to 60 and below however those are rather infrequent. It is still very playable. The GeForce 256 was launched in October of 1999. It has 32 megabytes of video memory and an HEP 4X interface. The clock speeds are 120 megahertz for the core and 166 megahertz for the memory. The memory initially came in the single data rate standard and later in February of 2000 it was upgraded with the DDR double data rate memory which doubled the memory bandwidth. The memory interface is 128 bits. The feature that makes this video card a GPU is the TNL engine transformation and lighting. Transformation is the task of producing a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional scene and lighting is basically altering the color of the various surfaces depending on light sources in the scene. The GeForce 256 is DirectX 7 and OpenGL compliant. In terms of pricing back in the day, I actually struggled finding a clear price. It must have been somewhere in the range of 300 to 400 US dollars though. These days, if you're interested in buying a GeForce 256, you will definitely have a hard time. There are currently no active listings, at least looking at eBay Australia. And the only sold listing I found was two weeks ago and the card sold for 70 US dollars. So it's definitely not a card that you can get on a budget. Quake 2 runs really well on this machine. We're getting around 70 to 80 FPS and it runs at the 1024 by 768 resolution. The test system we're looking at is a Pentium 4 running at 2.8 GHz. We've got 512 megabytes of DDR memory. The sound card is an Aurel Vortex 2. We've got a 16 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra SD card for storage, an FSP 500 watt power supply, and also Windows 98 SE. Let's have a look at some benchmarks. We've got 3D Mark 2000, and we have the results of some of the video cards I have reviewed in the past. With the results for the Voodoo 3, you must realize that this card only renders in 16-bit colors. It's got a 22-bit equivalent post-processing filter. It also struggles displaying high-resolution textures, but that's how it was back in the day. The Voodoo's uh, focused on speed and sacrificed a little bit of image quality. Now, in 3D Mark 2000, the GeForce 256 is the fastest video card. Let's have a look at 2001. Here we can see the GeForce is still very fast, but the Voodoo is a little bit quicker. In Dracon, the GeForce is definitely the fastest card. Compared to the TNT2, it's almost double the speed. In Expandable, the Voodoo is the quickest card, almost 80 FPS, and the GeForce is not far behind with 68. In GL Quake, the GeForce is very strong, 112 FPS at 1024 by 768. 
In Quake 2, the GeForce is also very strong, 103 FPS. So that's a massive lead compared to the TNT2 Ultra. In Quake 3, we can see the same trend, the GeForce pulling ahead of all the other cards. And in MDK2, the GeForce 256 is also very strong. However, the Voodoo 3 is a tiny bit faster. So all in all, we can see a very solid performance gain over the TNT2 Ultra. You can expect around a minimum of 60 FPS in all games playing at 1024 by 768 and 32 bit colors. The Voodoo 3 spoils the party a little bit and is sometimes faster than the GeForce 256, for example in Expendable and MDK2. Serious Sam, this is a more advanced game from 2002, also supports TNL. The FPS are anywhere around 40 to 60. It is quite playable, but in my opinion, this game demands more GPU power. The Transform and Lighting Engine helps you with supported games and if you have a slow processor. But what happens if your processor is fast? Do you get extra performance if you switch off the TNL engine and you use the traditional CPU to do all the TNL stuff? And we're looking here at 3D Mark 2000 and we can see a clear difference. So this score improves to 5878 when using the software CPU render instead of doing the TNL on the video card. In actual games, the outcome is interesting. In GPU bound situations, for example, playing MDK2 at 1024 by 768, there's only a one FPS difference. Once we lower the resolution and play at 640x480, which basically no one would do, but for this test, it's an interesting setting, we can see a bit more of a difference. So using the TNL here on the CPU, we're getting seven FPS more. A new addition to my channel is a power measurement device and we can see that the GeForce 256 does consume more power even at idle it has a higher power draw. Same goes for gaming with Quake 2 at 1600 by 1200 and then with the expandable at 1024 by 768 with VSync enabled I'm think, hoping that this will become a power efficiency test basically how much uh, power does the machine need to run expendable at 60 hertz so once we get to faster video cards we should see a drop off uh, with power but at this point of time we only have two results so uh, stay with me we will have more results very soon Hurry. System Shock 2 is also very playable. At 1024 by 768, we're getting well over 100 FPS most of the time. So this is extremely playable, and if you're running System Shock on this graphics card, you should be very happy. It's the only way to get to the medical subsection. Pick up the battery from the floor and find So let's try to summarize what the GeForce 256 is all about. In terms of performance, you're definitely getting good performance all around. For Windows 98, retro or gaming PC, this is a solid graphics card and most games should run just fine. Now back in the day, the GeForce 256 was pitched that when you combine it with a slow CPU that the TNL engine will give you a benefit, but I have to question that statement a little bit. Who would get a high-end $300, $400 video card and use it with a slow Celeron? Also, I had a look at uh, Moby games and checked out how many TNL supporting games were there in 1999 and 2000 and the list is actually very small. So this was one of the examples where Nvidia would introduce a future proof or new feature which wasn't quite supported uh, at the time of release. Now later games that do support TNL, depending on the game, they might not be fast enough. They will probably run fairly well on this card, but if you want more performance then you should be looking elsewhere. What is interesting is that although these cards are hard to find and you will have to pay a premium, they are not really sought after. Looking on forums and just talking to other retro gamers out there, not many people buy a GeForce 256 or use a GeForce 256 in their retro gaming PCs. Most of them just go with a GeForce 2 or a GeForce 3. 
The other thing with the GeForce 256 is it doesn't really have a proprietary or a unique feature to this card. For example, like a Glide with the Voodoo cards or S3 Metal. So something unique that makes this card special. So although it is hard to find, it is not really sought after, which is actually quite a unique combination. So in my opinion, although this is a unique card and it's got a very important role to play in the video card history, in my opinion, you're better off just buying a GeForce 2 or GeForce 3. You're basically getting the same compatibility, but a lot higher performance for a very low price tag. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. On the video are a couple of video suggestions. As always, if you haven't subscribed, so please do so. Leave me a comment down below, share the video like or dislike and I see you soon with another video.